finish with our room and see if we can get some final glimmerings of hope from the Kabbalah runes, which are a rune set in the Hebrew alphabet. Because I've equated the Hebrew letter shapes and, and sounds with the um, Norse runes of Odin. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm the first you know, intellectual to try and marry these two systems of the Kabbalah and the Norse runes and say they go back to a common root in uh, prehistoric times in the shamanic cultures of um, you know, West Asia. The ancestors of the Indo-European tribes and the ancestors of the Hamato-Semitic tribes were, were discovering the fundamental building blocks of thought and sound and speech, um, is, is how I would put it, and realizing they are, they are magical tools that we can use. Um, <clears throat> okay, yeah, how about have a room set? Should we do one of each? Or... <clears throat> mm. that could be... Let's just do one, one, do... One, okay. one of each from that, that box. Yeah. That, that, that back. Mm. Well, sure. Okay. <clears throat> right. Hmm. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, go on then. You can do one of these then as well, just to confuse it. Okay. So. So the two you brought are uh, Tzade, um, and this I equate, well, it's, it's supposed to be a fish hook. The, the origin of the shape is a fish hook. Um, and it's a very interesting rune. Um, it, it comes in the word Tzadik, a saint, and also Tzadik meaning righteous. It's the quality that Abraham has biblically. I mean, Abraham wasn't perfect. He, he, he fought, he was a warrior, he dissembled, he pretended Sarah, his wife, wasn't his wife when they went to Egypt, which caused all kinds of trouble. Um, he could be deceptive, you know, etc., etc. But all he had was righteousness, which is this striving to be better. Um, he, and he had a prayer life. He, he was looking for the ultimate. Um, <clears throat> And so, so it's an important word, um, sound rather, tzadi. It's also there in the word for Zion, Zion, which originally meant the shadow, the place of the shadows. Um, every mountain has a shadow side and a sun side. Zion is the shadow side of the mountain, the etymology of it. In a sense, Zionism is the shadow side of humanity. It's ego wanting to, to get back to its land, its place, whereas everything is God's land. The rune I associate this with is um, <clears throat> the rune of Tiwaz, which is, um, which is the warrior rune, which is the fish hook that, that stabs away and, you know, um, and wants victory. So that's a problem. We have, we have too many people being too stabby at the moment on the planet. Um, <clears throat> so what's the rune that could match this in Odin's thing? You've drawn Bakana, which is the rune of, um, of fecundity and the letter B. We had this last time. In the Kabbalah runes, it's Beit, the house, and it's the origin of the word um, Beth, the birch being, and um, the breasts as well, the, the fecundity of life. So that's more the feminine quality that can counterbalance Sadi, I would say. You've drawn the problem and the solution um, in your two runes. Um, did you draw, you didn't yet do an Odin rune, did you? Let's have, see what you get there. Um, <clears throat> Ah, thank you. 
Yes. So, um, <clears throat> so what we've got here is um, the letter Z, the Zain, in the Kabbalah runes, um, which is um, related to Zachar, remember, Zachariah, um, the father of John the Baptist. It's also there in Zohar, the glory, um, and is an important Kabbalah rune. Um, it, it has a deep sort of sound, Z -Z Zain, um, is, is, a, is a remembrance. So, so the solution we're looking for will come as we remember. It's interesting that in the Greek philosophical system, Mimosanes, the mother of all the muses, she's the goddess of remembrance. And out of remembrance comes all knowledge. All the muses, the nine muses, watch over all human intellection and art and creativity, and it all comes from remembrance. If we remember who we are, <coughs> which is eon in progress, then we can get back to a world of creativity instead of a world of self-destruction and trying to prevent other people's creativity. Um, you know, I think one of the most tragic things about the Gaza situation is one of the claims in the South African case for genocide is that Israel is deliberately stopping women giving birth by bombing hospitals. Um, there's no doctors left, there's no medicines, so you're giving birth with no... Um, you know, pain relief or anything, and, and women are dying. Um, and the claim is this is deliberate, um, otherwise why bomb hospitals, you know? Um, what it is, is an ass assault on people's creativity, and the right, to, the right to have children, the right to bear, is one of the most fundamental of human rights. It's the right to love, because all these children are, are conceived in, in loving relationships, um, and yet, now it's being led to a slaughter. So I think if we remember, <coughs> then this, this can be transformed into honouring each other's creativity. As I said before, there's no, there's no reason why I can't be a pious Jew and believe in my revelations and you can't be a pious Muslim or Christian and believe in yours. What we have to do as humanity is go to the deepest possible remembrance where we remember they're all from the same ultimate truth. They all come from the one, like leaves from the same tree, if you want. Um, <clears throat> I think that's the, the critical lesson here. Um, so, and the, the, um, the Norse rune you've, you've, you've picked here um, is kind of supporting that concept um, and is the rune Echwas um, which is the twelfth rune if I can just find it um, <coughs> in my um, in my text here hang on um, mm -mm -mm. stands for the yew tree, um, which is a very long-lived tree. When I lived in the castle in Scotland, we had a yew tree there. And also represents Yggdrasil. And some would say it represents the human spine. Um, so it's our own intelligence which connects heaven and earth. Um, the yew is the tree of immortality, um, planted by graves. Um, I remember many Welsh country churches have yew trees planted there and because it's a symbol of immortality of the soul. If we remember our immortality, the need to kill is shown to be a stupid, silly idea because, because we're all going to keep coming back again and again anyway um, till we resolve the problems that are at the root of all this. And my my proposal is that we start linking conflict resolution theory with past life regression theory. We've got to have people that are experts in, in conflict resolution and peacemaking. 
working with people that can do past life regression theory and find out why these people hate each other so much, life after life. We've got to find a way to cleanse that um, so that instead of coming back and doing hatred and war and violence, we can do friendship, love, amity and wisdom work. Um, as I've tried to show in my commentary on the Quran and on the Jewish Bible and the Christian Bible, they're all reconcilable. They're all ultimately pointing to our duty as human beings to, to work for wisdom instead of destruction. Um, you know, don't feed the Twin Towers destruction in its whatever latest form. Um, try and feed the eternal life that is within us all, eon. Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, much more detail is in the actual book of the Kabbalah rune. Um, and I commend it to, to people that really want to go into depth. You know, study the, study the books. Um, and I do talk quite a lot there about taking the, um, the Jewish Kabbalah runes back to their Babylonian and Mesopotamian roots. Um, it's fascinating. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Um, <clears throat> in the um, Zoroastrian tradition, Zoroaster is from the same Zain rune. You also have Zervan, who is a bit like um, Eternal Time. He would be the, um, the eon of the gods as well, Zervan. Um, okay. Any, any questions or any points of clarification? It's a, it's a lot to take in, but we can, you know, think about it and let it land. But does anyone have any specific questions for now? I have an observation, it's not a question. Okay, go for it. Yep, yep. Um, it kind of... For me, it, started, it began with Eon and how that was the air, Queen of Air, mm. and how that air and that ether carries on, and then that's how we breathe, like that's how we birth our reality here, and it's about what we choose to do with that breath that can transform, but then when we got um, Airwaves, it reminded me of, obviously, birth, creation and destruction, so very much about the... Panku as well, and how <clears throat> it can also be a kundalini energy. So if you tune into your breath and your stillness and your peacefulness, where you find the divine, mm. you can bring in, you know, uh, that peace and that harmony and that, you know, purity that comes when you still your breath and you choose to breathe consciously. And I think it shifts from a destructive, egoic kind of state into a conscious awareness that can then help to transform, transform the world. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes. Which is why Buddhists say focus on the breath. Mm. <clears throat> and in yoga it's about mm. breathing. And then, yes, mm. so then to take the breath allegory, I'm not quite sure the word, and then how the runes then shape that sound and how that's then how we then communicate with each other and these ways of linking the shapes of sound over the faiths and different religion it's actually we're just trying to communicate with each other so if you take it back to the Z for example because this is also mm. a Z mm. you know it's like we're all shaping that sound we're all we all know what that means so if we can go back and focus on the true shape of that sound of that breath, it brings us back into unity, into this oneness, mm. you know? Mm. So... No, I like that, yeah. yes. Um, yes, just to comment what, what you were saying makes me think that <clears throat> the egotism of thinking that your, your speech, your sound, is the only one. Because if you think about it, like, I can speak with a little bit of breath. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but think how vast the world is. I mean, if you measure the breath of one person's speech compared to all the sum total of air, mm. I mean, as you said, the queen of air is the queen mm. of the whole lot. 
<laughs> so the ultimate truth cannot be spoken. That was what the Taoists mm. say. Because nobody could say that whole totality at any one time. Which is why in the Jewish faith they say the same. God is the absolute breath of all breaths. Cannot be just spoken in one word. Um, and that's why when you get into the inner sanctum of the temple, you're silent. Only in the silence can God's voice be heard, which is the original word Shem, to be silent, to, to be receiving um, the word mm. and to hear. Um, <clears throat> you know, my, my antidote to, to anti-Semitism um, is philo-Semitism. If we became philo-Semitic, and loved all the Semitic peoples for their for the wisdom of all of them, Phoenician, Babylonian, Akkadian, Jewish, Islamic, um, you know, Arabic, all the different Semitic cultures and tribes are based on this hearing, because the word Semite means to hear, to listen. So that's listening to the one great vast breath that we are all little bits of, which is the silence. Um, so that's what I was, yeah, that's mm. my response to what you're saying. Mm. I think we're saying the same thing here. Mm. And that does lead to, to true humility and true surrender. But in love, you know, when you love somebody really, you, you're, you surrender your ego to, their, to the, the project, which is your friendship, um, your love. So that's what we've got to do as a humanity. And... Um, we're still learning. We're taking baby steps, aren't we? We just mustn't let the babies smash up the entire nursery before we learn how to walk. Um, that would be very tragic. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, we will resume anon.